This is Sebastian Vendel Martinez for MMANews.com. I'm here with Penny Banzai Kianzad, who faces Sajara Eubanks on December 19th in Las Vegas. So, Penny, once again, you have a high profile mm. fight. Uh, Sajara Eubanks, who obviously has had a lot of big fights herself, did very well in the Ultimate Fighter. She's been linked to some big fights that haven't materialized. But it's also an opponent where, if you look on paper, it could be a really tough outing that doesn't necessarily bring a name value that you might want at this stage. Why was this fight appealing to you? Um, like you say, really good fighter. Uh, was actually offered the flyweight title mm -hmm. at one point against Valentina Shevchenko. Um, she had a rough start. I would admit. Uh, I mean, she has ba uh, losses, back to back losses to Aspen Ladd and Betch Cohea and, um, and Caitlin Vieira. But as you see, it's really good opponents. And I think, like you say, her, her on paper doesn't look really that good. But that's why, you know, we know how good she is. To play devil's advocate, one could say that you don't necessarily have as much to win in this fight as you do to lose. Um, for me, it's a win-win. Uh, it is a really big win uh, when I win because um, I see her as a really highly ranked opponent. She is above me, and she has a lot of name for herself. She made a lot of name for herself from being mad that she wasn't really a name <laughs> um, when she was in the flyweight division. Like A lot of people know her. A lot of people talk about her. And especially when she fought Julia Avila, that she actually uh, won against and uh, people got shocked. And I was like, uh, I was, when I watched the fight, I was like, I don't know why she's a, such a big underdog. She, I'm pretty sure she's going to win this fight. Um, cause, and I didn't really think that Julia was ready for, uh, for Sarge to bite back. And I think she did amazing in that fight. And but against Kaylin Vieira, um, it was a stop because I think just Kaylin just had the upper hand. You know, she's much bigger, she's much taller. And the good thing is, I feel that um, she has a, a harder problem against taller fighters. It's good for me. But um, we've been getting ready for this fight like no other fight. I've been like breeding this fight. Um, I got special help from um, my teammate Mas Brunel as well, and uh, like a few private classes every week just to prepare, you know. So if if anybody thinks I'm underestimating anything, they're they're dead wrong. I've been training like this is my last fight ever, and that's how I feel every time I fight. Doesn't matter who it is, when it is. Uh, I always try to think this is my last fight. So I will, you know, I'm I'm preparing myself every day, every time for my last fight. Well, it's noticeable. I mean, you had three training sessions today, which is, you know, still quite a bit for a high high level UFC athlete. Uh, I wanted to touch back on what you mentioned, uh, uh, Eubanks' win over uh, Julia Vila. Uh, now you took a short notice fighting against Julia Vila, ended up losing on the judges' scorecards, and then Eubanks has now beaten her. Do you feel some kind of connection? You can almost like get that win back by beating the fighter who beat Julia Vila? Maybe. Or do you maybe not think about it at all? Actually, I haven't thought about it until you, okay. <laughs> until you mentioned it. Um, I, I just think that Julia is a hard opponent to fight on short notice. Mm. I knew that. I knew I had a 50-50 chance. I was like, you know what? Doesn't matter. Let's try. Um, like like every other fighter says, like on another day I would fight her, I would win her, uh, uh, I would win. Of course I feel like that. Of of course I would win on another day, like with a camp, because I feel like uh, Patty that made her debut is definitely the uh, um, different fighter than today, um, and um, yeah, just like I don't, I just think that people are just looking past Sidra in that fight. I think she did exactly the right choices, and I think Julia did a lot of mistakes. Uh, that that didn't benefit her. Um, I just think she wasn't ready. I honestly, I think she was fighting Gina Mazzani again. <laughs> she thought she was fighting somebody that wouldn't punch back. Yeah. And like you have to think about like Sarge is like um, she has a lot of fights now, and she's been in, in the Ultimate Fighter. She came to the finals, and um, yeah, we've been taking this fight like that seriously. It's uh, it's been everything we on our minds. Um, and we are ready to leave 2020 with a bang. That's it.
A bang it certainly would be, but you've got a tough test in front of you because let's look a little deeper at Sajara Eubanks. I mean, she's a tough, hard-nosed, gritty fighter, not necessarily the most glamorous style, but she definitely gets the job done. What's it like preparing for somebody who's just, you know, keeps coming forward, you know, head down, fists up, just never stops going? I mean, it's like just, it's a grueling style. You know what? Uh, I thought about it, and and the reason why I actually said, we asked for the fight first, but then she got another opponent, and then we got it. And it, and the reason I, why I wanted it, too, is like every other teammate I have in Suave is exactly like her. Gritty and uh, it digs deep, uh, good grappler, good wrestling, just tough as nails. So, I mean, if I have the, the people around me that can help me for it, I mean, it's it's no use not using it. Um, and like I said, I come from a from a jujitsu wrestling based club, so I am. Um, I took the advantage of like I took the opportunity to uh, to uh, prepare myself for a fighter that I knew like I could get a lot of help for as well. And obviously, the end goal for any UFC fighter should be the UFC title. Uh, and you, I know you've had your eye on it. You've had you know t uh, titles in different organizations before. <clears throat> At the top of your division, you got Amanda Nunes, who she hasn't said anything outright, but it seems like she sees a bit of an end for her career coming sometime in the near future. Is that will that be some kind of one that got away? Like, do you still want to fight her? At some point, like, is that as important as the title, or does it not really matter who has the title for you? Um, I, I, I would be lying if I said it doesn't matter who has the title because she is absolutely the greatest of all times right now. And of course, I would love to fight for a title with her, but I don't think she's gonna be there for that long. I, I think maybe after this fight, she's done. Like, I would be if I would do like all the um, if I would win over all the opponents she has. Like, I would actually quit after the Spencer fight. Mm. Like, I wouldn't wait around for Megan Anderson, honestly. Uh, because she doesn't have the status as Ronda Rousey or Holly Holm had. Mm. Uh, and Misha Tate. Um, so, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, I'm not doing this to be, like, come to top 10 and, like, hoping for a better contract next time. Next time. Like, I'm doing it until the end. And then I'm gone, you know? So, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to after the, these four fights that I signed for and the next contract will be for a different kind of contract, like for mm -hmm. a tower fight included. So who do you, cause you know, if you don't see Amanda Nunes being champ much longer, who do you see being champ when it comes to the point of you challenging for the title? I think Holly's going to get another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Holly is like up there. Um, like I thought I saw something in Arena Lana, but like no. Um I don't think I think after um Nunes is Holly mm. still. But before like I could see Jermaine as well, but um like Holly Jermaine. Okay. And uh good. That's good fights. I I I like the styles and I like you know. One step at a time. Let's let's uh, win over Sajara and get to top ten and then top five. Absolutely, one step at a time. And <clears throat> uh, the December nineteenth event would have been a very very big one for Swedish MMA in particular because Kamsa Chimaev, who was such a big breakout star, uh, was supposed to fight for his fight is now scrapped because of COVID. And I feel like that might even affect the event overall because he was bringing so much attention to it because of his hype. Is that something that you thought about at all? No. I'm, I mean, doesn't matter. Like, I'm still going to fight on it. Like, I don't really care about how how important an event is, as long as I'm in it, you know, as long as I'm in it. You know? That makes it important, right? <laughs> as long as I'm in it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, unfortunate, uh, but, I mean, these things happen in these times. And, I mean, Stephen Thompson is headlining, and, I mean, he's a star as well, so it yeah. doesn't matter. And what are your thoughts on Kamza? Do you see him going, you know, all the way to champ status? I mean, he's obviously brought a lot of eyes to Swedish MMA. A lot of people have been keeping an eye on, like, Fight Club Rush now because he, you know, had his first fight in Sweden there. Uh, what do you see in the future for Kamza Chimaev? Oh, I definitely see gold. Like, I think he's going to... Uh, just because he's he's already that high in the rankings in such a hard division... I think he's going to bring in, like, the first Swedish goal. I'm the second. 
because he's gonna he's gonna like he's gonna fight Leon. He's gonna win over him. He's gonna f- maybe get a title fight or something. Maybe a fight before that, and then then he's gonna be champ. All right. So first we just go for Hamzat, and then Pani Kianzad brings the second gold to Sweden. First female gold. First female gold. There you have it. But in order to do that, you got to get past the JRU banks. And how do you do that? Like when you visualize the fight, what do you see? Do you see a three-round war where you have to dig deep? Or do you think maybe you've got what it takes to put her out early? I think I have to dig really deep. Like I think I will be like I, I see myself like realistically, I see myself being great and I see myself dominating. But I see myself also in deep waters. I do that. Uh, I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm not going to say oh, I'm going to go you know, knock around in the first round because, I mean, look at my record. I'm not a knockout artist. I'm a decision fighter. But <laughs> I think I'm a pretty exciting decision fighter. Um, um, I see myself digging deep. Uh, but I I feel it. Like, it's, it's like... Um, it's like with every fight, I guess. Like, I see myself dominating people because that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. I'm trying t- to dominate people. And um, I'm trying to uh, to run people over with my cardio. So, I mean, I I always have good camps. I'm never in bad shape when I'm fighting. But, I mean, these past times, it's been like... I've been I invested so much in myself and my own, you know, health and uh, in my training um these past two three years now and i feel like finally i'm getting you know some some positive stuff out of it like from putting like all my time and effort like uh, uh, the area i've been living before and like you know just saving up shit and trying to you know cope with everything with being a full-time fighter with not full-time money and be working full-time and i feel that finally when i'm when I can be able to do this full time, I'm be able to like get all my potential out, uh, out there and get all the training I need for this. I actually completely agree. I think that once fighters can focus 100% on fighting, that's when we really see the best fighter within them. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like your fan base has grown quite a bit over the past couple of years, especially after you beat Bitch Cohea, which was a very impressive performance. Uh, what's your final message for the fans, both the ones who will be glued to the screen when you're fighting and all the other ones out there who have maybe discovered you more recently? Um, nothing more than, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so ready to take over like the American based, uh, fighters as well, like fans. Um, I feel that, you know, I'm lurking in the dark, you know, not many people, you know, think maybe that much about me and stuff like that, but I don't, honestly, I don't just give a shit. Like I'm, I'm, I'm training my ass off every day and, um, I'm, I have to tell you, I'm not talented. Uh, honestly, I'm a hard worker. You, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's a, like when I started with martial arts, I was, I was told I'm not talented cause I'm like, I, I was like losing here and there all the time. And but I but I finally understood what people mean but like you know hard work beats talent because I got so much better than I than if I would only have talent. I saw people around me with talent they they don't fight anymore. Mm-hmm. Because they were like they were thinking so highly of themselves and you know I I think highly of myself too, but it feels like I have been working a lot for it and uh, I am a really hard worker and I actually enjoy this. I enjoy training. I enjoy you know fight camp as much as I was whiny before this day like with diet and everything. But I enjoy it and I enjoy seeing myself grow growing and that's what I want to do. I want to I want to show like if people thought I was good in a bench fight, I'm gonna be spectacular like in, in this fight. All right, you can't sell it any better than that. Expect a spectacular performance, a war, and expect Pani Kianza to steal a couple U.S. fans from some of the other UFC fighters out there. Pani, thank you very much. Good luck in the fight. Thank you.